Funny Feuds is an ongoing series where we talk about the behind the scenes battles of the people that make us laugh. In today's episode, we're talking about Tim Dillon and Michael Shea. Tim Dillon and Michael Shea had a brief social media spat in November of 2021. While it did not involve someone getting their head bashed into a bar or going to prison, I think this beef is just as interesting due to it being between two men who found their success doing similar things on very different platforms. Both of these guys are funny and successful. Michael Shea is one of the head writers and hosts of Weekend Update on Saturday Night Live. And Tim Dillon has the number two podcast on Patreon. As of the writing of this episode, he was pulling in $211,000 per month. On a personal note, in the past couple of years, Tim Dillon's podcast, along with Matt and Shane's, have given me the most and biggest laughs. On their November 13th, 2021 episode, SNL released a sketch parodying a couple of things in the news. Ted Cruz getting angry at a tweet by Big Bird saying that he was fully vaccinated, and Joe Rogan receiving criticism from the media for promoting ivermectin as a treatment for COVID. The sketch was called Cruise Street, and it revolved around Ted Cruz introducing his version of Sesame Street. At one point, Pete Davidson impersonates Joe Rogan and tells Big Bird to take horse medication and made fun of Joe Rogan for saying that he can suck his own dick on his podcast. The sketch wasn't funny, and Pete Davidson's Joe Rogan impression stood out as especially bad. There's a part where Ted Cruz announces that Bert and Ernie are proud boys now, and Bert and Ernie come out and clarify that they're actually two boys who are out and proud. That was alright, but that's about the only thing on the sketch that even managed to get a smile out of me. And I'm not the only one who wasn't fond of the sketch. The Saturday Night Live Twitter account posted a clip of the sketch highlighting Pete Davidson's Joe Rogan impression, and it received less than glowing praise in the responses. Tim Dillon replied to the tweet saying, There were a hundred ways to do this sketch and have it be funny. The show now is just lazy, mediocre hacks. He elaborated, saying, People saying SNL hasn't been funny since the 70s are wrong. Farley, Rock, Sandler, Myers, Norm, Sherry O'Terry, and Molly Shannon were brilliant. Tracy Morgan. Also, the hater McKinnon era was funny. It's maybe the singular greatest U.S. comedy platform, but the sketch was bad. And not bad because of made fun of Joe or Ivermectin, but it did it in the laziest way possible. It was talking points and not jokes. Comedy shows can have a point of view, mine does, but it should also occasionally have comedy. Shea caught wind of those tweets and responded to them on his Instagram story, saying, LOL, you gotta be kidding me. Tim Dillon? What's the world coming to? Tim Dillon? Tim fucking Dillon? Look, I don't want no trouble. A fan replied to Shay, informing him that at the time Tim was making 190 k on Patreon. Shay responded, I don't care if it's a zillion. I know Tim Dillon, and he ain't what you think he is. He's a sweet, humble guy who really tried to stand up, got nowhere, became a media personality because it's much easier, and we're all very happy for him. But don't get fresh, Tim. As a guy who tried stand-up and is now trying to become a media personality, I find what Michael Shea said highly insulting. Apparently, Tim did too, since he fired back, saying, Here's the reality. I sell more tickets than Michael Shea ever has. I don't think he's allowed to use this website for his job. And I built something on my own that he could never do. Shea has done well for a drunk who can barely read, but his show sucks and he knows it. Shea responded through Instagram stories again, saying, All fair points, and I'm very proud of Tim. I don't want no trouble. When a fan responded to Shay's story, letting him know how well Tim Dillon was doing, Shay responded saying, And we're all very proud of him, and you know I don't want no trouble, but in the words of Prodigy, along with, Seriously folks, what's this world coming to? LOL, the last time I saw Tim Dillon was about three years ago, and he was so nice and complimentary, and I told him I was very proud of him, and I still am. I'm not going to say nothing to Tim that I wouldn't tell him in person. He's a sweet guy. Ask anybody that knows him. I couldn't find screenshots of these two, but Shay also said that it's 2021, so you should live your truth, and sarcastically that Tim Dillon is a star and Donald Trump is president, and that there were several white men of a certain size in his DMs after coming for Tim Dillon. Shay also said, A lot of these guys that you think are so free-thinking and badass are not that at all. They're pandering. They're insulting your intelligence. They think you're dumb. They know what you want to hear, and they're willing to say it because you pay them directly. They're doing the same thing these liberal hacks do. Why would it not work both ways? And I say it's a nice fight! It's a goddamn nice fight! Are you ready? To me, it really feels like Shay overreacted to Tim's tweets. The sketch isn't funny, and Tim was far from the only person pointing this out. The whole thing was lazy. It's a series of people walking into frame as a character, stating a couple things about the character they play, and then making a half-assed punchline. It really feels like someone went on the Wikipedia pages for Ted Cruz, Big Bird, and Joe Rogan for 30 seconds and turned that into a sketch. Pete Davidson especially stood out as lazy and unfunny in this sketch. I've read several people online defending Pete, saying that due to Rogan's politics, he didn't deserve any effort put into his impression. But six different performers have played Adolf Hitler 
on SNL. So if that's the case, it's really stupid. And sure, if Hitler is too far back for you for this point to be valid, how about having Alec Baldwin playing Donald Trump weekly for four years? Joe Rogan is an inherently ridiculous person. I'd estimate I watch Rogan's podcast two or three times a year when a comedian I like is on it, but I know he's very easy to parody and be funny while parodying. Standing around with a bag of pills repeating CNN talking points about him isn't the way to do that. And, by the way, despite him being friends with the guy, Tim Dillon is the perfect person to be criticizing someone's Rogan impression. Despite looking and sounding nothing like Joe Rogan, Tim Dillon does an impression of Joe that absolutely kills every time he does it. I want you, I want you, you to go up, on, you gotta, you gotta, I want you to go on Joe's show again, so literally after everything you say, Joe could go, I don't think so, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> that, <was, laughs> that was the whole episode. Who's just like, hi, how are you? Joe's like, no, 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 no good, mom. It's no good, mom. My first no episode with him, I always... Joe, Joe, when Joe is doing the podcast with Lewis, he's just for three hours staring at the worst version of himself. <laughs> <laughs> what like, if so news like, radio never yeah, happened? Yeah, Joe's like, so you're like me, mom, but you don't have any money. <laughs> That's fucking weird, man. That's fucking weird, man. It's fucking weird. You don't have any money, mom. Joe, how <laughs> rich is weird. how rich is Joe Rogan? I, I have a lot of money, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Ellis is gonna kill Lewis Gomez, mom. You gotta kill him. You just gotta kill him. You just gotta kill him, mom. Lewis doesn't get it. You gotta kill him. He's gonna be dead. He's gonna be dead, mom. He's gonna be dead, mom. That's a good impression. I've never seen that before, and it's immediately my new favorite thing in the world. I don't know. Tim Dillon's Joe Rogan impression is my favorite thing. Yeah, Lewis came to the hotel today raving about it. Yeah. He was like, Lewis, Tim Mom, you're an idiot, Mom. I like him, Mom, but he's going to get killed. <laughs> Jason Ellis, Mom, he's going to fucking, he doesn't understand. He's going to get hit, Mom, and it's over, Mom. <laughs> You gotta always kind of chew when you're doing it, mom. <laughs> also, it's weird that Shea went out of his way to call Tim a media person as opposed to a stand-up comedian. They both still do stand-up, and what they're most known for outside of stand-up isn't really that different. Tim Dillon's podcast is him going through headlines and making jokes with his skinny white sidekick, Ben. While Weekend Update is Michael Shea going through headlines and making jokes with his skinny white sidekick, Colin. So what caused Michael Shea's overreaction? Well, at least partially, it seems like he's had opinions about Tim Dillon for a while. Months before the social media spat happened in March of 2021, Shay asked his Instagram followers where he should do promotion for his upcoming sketch show on HBO Max. When a fan recommended Tim Dillon's show, he said the exact same thing. You gotta be kidding. The cynic in me wants to point out that the feud happened on a Sunday and Shay had a Netflix special coming out that Tuesday. It's entirely possible he wanted to drum up some attention to that special and use the guy who had a lot of buzz to do so. And by the way, just because I feel like I'm shitting on Michael Shea a lot in this video, I'd like to point out that I watched that special. I like that special. I like Shea. I just think he was wrong here. This is purely conjecture, but in Tim's first series of tweets, the most recent era of SNL that he mentions as being funny is the McKinnon hater era. Kate McKinnon is still on the show. Bill Hader's last episode was the finale of season 38, while Michael Shea's first episode was the season 40 premiere. So according to Tim, the show stopped being good right around when Shea joined. But the current SNL cast is not without talent. Shea is funny and Colin works well with him. I like a lot of the stuff Kate McKinnon has done. I think A.D. Bryan is funny. I haven't seen much from Melissa Villasenor, but I've enjoyed what I've seen. Kyle Mooney is absolutely hilarious and tragically underutilized on the show. I'm sure there are others I'm not thinking of that deserve a mention. A couple of weeks ago, they had a sketch where John Mulaney played a monkey judge, and it's really funny. SNL has never been perfect, and I know people say this every year, but it's worse now than it's ever been, and I don't think the cast is the problem. The day after their exchange, Tim Dillon went on The Real Ass Podcast, hosted by the Puerto Rican rattlesnake Luis J. Gomez in a disinterested mountain troll named Zach Amico. He gave the breakdown of what happened between him and Shay and made similar points. But Shay, he... It well, was... What's funny about him is I like him. Yeah, me We've too. Met. I, 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 Shay I is agree. one of the I... only famous people in the world who will still... Come and do shows like Legion of Skanks. I, I think she yeah, is a good dude. I agree and he's with funny. him on a lot of things, right? Like, I agree with a lot of what he says. And but here's, here's where he's right, but it applies to both me and him. I'm known from a podcast. He's known from SNL. Sebastian Maniscalco is known from stand-up. Nate Bargatze is known from stand-up. Mm. So I, I will give him some credit here. 
I'm not insulted by saying I'm a media figure. That's not an insult. I don't know if it's true, but I don't think it's an insult. I don't think it's an insult to say this. Per- it's easier to become a media figure than become a stand-up comedian. Number one, in both cases, that would be very difficult, right? Yeah. So to build like an audience, I have the second biggest show on Patreon, all this stuff. That so you guys are t- you're you're doing the exact same thing, I, just yeah. different engines. I think if you, you got to also say you, you're a media figure if you work it. NBC, right, <laughs> right. You work at SNL. You sit behind a desk. You wear a suit. Your tracks come from Comcast. That's media. I have a platform and fans and an opinion. So I'm. I, I'll. I'll. I don't think it's outside of the realm of what's rational to say. Like everybody who succeeded in this, for the most part, is in the media to a degree. Of like course. we're all. Like I mean, we are all. Arguing. It was very interesting to watch Che's reaction because he does he does the thing where he'll you know it's it's a story. He goes Tim yeah. Dillon question mark Really, Tim Dillon? And I'm yeah. going like, yeah, Tim Dillon. It's, but it's, well, not, well, it's well, not working. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, what do you? It's not it like it's fucking work, Justin no. Silver. No offense to Justin, but like, <laughs> <laughs> if it was yeah. Justin, it's exactly not like no, Justin Silver. Yeah. Uh, I would understand him <laughs> like Justin Silver. Really, the dog guy is yeah. telling me like. But it's yeah. like, no, 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 yeah, Tim's one of the biggest comics working right now. And not to kiss your ass, but it just is what it is. Mm. So it's like... I, I just didn't get... And also, Che one, knows. Yeah. Che, and I know Che. Yeah. Che knows that sketch sucked cock. That's the... That that's, sketch I, sucked. That's the illusion. Yeah, he, should be, he should be going like, yeah, Tim, you're right. That sketch sucked I, I This is a show. Which is interesting, because uh, yeah. it also it's like Rogan has become so big that he would get a sketch on SNL. You'd think that they would nail it, and they could yeah. nail it. But they don't want to nail it. Yeah. And then, like, Michael Che did something on Instagram where he goes, you can do whatever you want. Donald Trump became president, and Tim Dillon's a star, right? Yeah. Here's So, basically, I think the point of that is, like, isn't the world crazy? Trump became president. So then you have to unpack that and go, you had Trump on your show. Yeah. Well, he, he, t- he starts taking personal shots with yeah. you. It's like, well, Che, like, you know, I, I, that was my thing that I took issue with because I'm going like, well, he, look, he's he's taking a shot at a piece of content that I don't, did Che, did he specifically write that no sketch? Idea. I have, I have no, no idea. idea. Maybe he did. Maybe it was his fucking baby and, and he, he was really he, proud of that one. Here's the reality. The reality is this. The numbers are what they are. Like, people enjoy what I do. They they come out to shows. We have a great time. I've done stand up for a long time. The podcast is is big. I'm I'm happy about that. I'm not angry. So yeah. if someone else is angry, they have to look at their career and their life. Yeah, you can't and and dig and go. Why am I angry? I'm not angry. I like how you're taking the high road too, because you took some nasty little shots at him too. No, I just <laughs> said what's true. And to say that I'm like a media guy, my sketches get more views than yours did. You had an HBO show with a full budget. No one saw it. No one cared. Right. I put out things from a garage and get millions of views. Stop. It's yeah. embarrassing. Wow. It's truly the way it is. I have 37,000 people that pay to hear what I say every single week. I sold out the Beacon Theater. I don't even fucking live here. We could have done Radio City if we wanted to. We could have done two Beacons. Like, what are you doing? I don't know. This is an embarrassment I don't know. for you. Wow. So, but again... I have no issue. <laughs> I have no issue with yeah, I like him. It's like, I don't want to say anything. But I like I don't him. want to say anything. Then he might find offensive. It, it's just what it is. It's like, he's a funny dude. Yeah. He's a funny yeah. guy. He's probably the funniest person on that show. Right. Yeah. But to say that I'm not a respected comedian or to say that like I'm some media figure or whatever, and that's what they, they say that about Joe. They say that about anybody that doesn't have to punch a clock. Yeah. A common defense that people have for SNL is that it's hard to come up with one or two hours of funny material every week. And that's what makes the fact that the other side of this feud is a big podcast are interesting. Podcasts have proven that it's very possible to be funny every week, in some cases twice a week, without writers' rooms or casts, just a couple of guys with microphones. And it seems like that fact is noticeable to SNL as well, considering they've been caught blatantly stealing bits from well-known podcasts. About Ratatouille, but he teaches a guy how to fuck. I love that. He's just okay. under a hat. He's mm-hmm. pulling his hair. Yeah. That guy's wife is like, can you take your chef's hat off? He's like, no. <laughs> 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 wow, that was incredible. Yeah? I gotta be honest, my expectations were really low, considering you insisted on wearing your top hat the whole time, but <laughs> seriously, that was amazing. Oh, thanks. What's your secret? Look, I'll tell you. Okay, but just promise you won't freak out. I promise. Okay. Well, you know how I said I studied abroad in Paris? I met someone there. You know what? Maybe it's better if I just show you. (laughs) 
Saturday Night Live is an institution. There are people whose life goal, even today, is to get on SNL. And the show is dying because more and more people would rather listen to a comedian be funny than watch. All this work goes into an episode of SNL. They have celebrity hosts, musical guests, a live studio audience, and people would rather listen to a guy yell about real estate in Long Island. And I'm sure if you were one of the stars of that show and a podcaster who's had a meteoric rise pointed that out, it would sting. And you might get defensive and lash out right back, not realizing you two aren't so different. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in videos where SNL cast members feud with perverts, you're in luck. That's half the channel. Check out these and feel free to subscribe as more funny feuds are coming soon.